Would you guys like to take a guess on what this thing might say? Let's fire up Firefox. Uh, Firefox has a uh, chat GPT built in. And uh, it's it's coming. It, it, it is slow. It is GNOME. Okay, so this is the latest Firefox. So to the left, we actually have some choices between uh, chat GPT and Tropic Claude. <laughs> I don't know that one. Of course, Google Gemini. Oh, looky, hugging chat. Maybe I should ask that one why Linux sucks. And then, le chat mistral. We'll go with chat GPT. So here it says, uh, ask anything. Okay. So I will just simply type in, why does Linux suck? And we'll, uh, we'll see what the answer uh, is here in a moment. So there we go. Click the arrow here. And we'll see what this thing has to say. Let's expand this, shall we? Um, okay. Linux isn't for everyone, but it definitely has a lot of strengths. If you feel like it sucks, and sucks is in quotation marks, it might be because of certain challenges or frustrations you've encountered. Here are some common reasons why some people have negative experiences with Linux. What do we have here? Uh, six, seven. All right. Uh, what I, th I think what I'll do here is read each one and then go back to each one and give you my thoughts about this. Okay. All right. Software compatibility. A lot of mainstream software, like certain Adobe products or specific games, uh, doesn't natively support Linux, which can be a huge downside if you rely on those programs. Number two, learning curve. If you're used to Windows or Mac OS, Linux can seem overwhelming. Many distributions require some familiar, familiar, familiarity <laughs> I need my coffee. Uh, with the command line, and certain tasks can be more complicated or require more technical knowledge. Uh, hardware support is number three. Although Linux supports a wide variety of hardware, sometimes issues arise with drivers, especially with more recent hardware or certain peripherals like printers or graphics cards. Ah, here's the big one, fragmentation. With so many different distributions, desktop environments, and package managers, it can be confusing. Choosing the right distro dealing with compatibility issues can be time-consuming for new users. Gaming. All right, while gaming on Linux has improved, with tools like Proton and Steam, uh, Steam's Linux client, uh, yeah. It still doesn't have the same level of support or performance compared to Windows. Some games simply don't work, and others may run with performance hiccups. Okay. Uh, support and documentation. While there's a huge community and many forms, uh, forums, official support can be spotty. Documentation can sometimes be unclear, especially for niche distributions or new users. Uh, number seven, uh, configurations. Linux allows for a high level of customization, but this can also make configuration more complex. Getting everything set up just the way you want it might require editing configuration files or working through troubleshooting steps. That's certainly true with Ubuntu and extensions. Uh, despite these challenges, Many users prefer Linux for its, for its flexibility, security, performance. It can be a great system if you're willing to put in the time to learn it. Have you had any specific issues with Linux that have caused frustrations? We could probably ask a billion Windows users, right? Okay, I believe that was the last one. Okay. I don't want to make this too long, but I think this, is, this deserves, deserves a fair analysis. So number one, software compatibility. A lot of mainstream software like Adobe products or specific games uh, don't natively support Linux. All right, I did have got, I had a few comments from viewers saying uh, for the specific software they need, maybe it was for work. I can't remember, and I can't remember who said that. Sorry about that. Uh, they said they can't use Linux. I can certainly understand that if you need specific software that. Uh, not available in Linux, or you, you you tried the emulation layer of the wine, not the wine you drink, but the wine for Linux, it doesn't work. Wine has never worked for me, so I can certainly understand that, but I'm guessing that most software 
that's available for Windows, uh, or Mac for that matter, should be available in its Linux counterpart, if I had to guess. Now, I, I don't have a Mac, so those of you who have Macs, if I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments below. I can certainly understand software compatibility, but for most software, I think that's not going to be a problem for most. All right, learning curve. If you're used to Windows or Mac OS, Linux can be uh, overwhelming. Many distributions require familiarity, familiarity with the command line. Um, okay, yeah, in, in running and in installing uh, Ubuntu and enabling extensions to install and fix a few things, I had to use the command line strictly for Ubuntu only. One of the uh, apps menu that I installed it should not have installed because it crashed the system. It kept rebooting on its own. And really this comes down to which Linux system you are installing. I know here on YouTube and even on the web, it's still, people are getting it wrong. I'm, I'm sorry, it, it is confusing. There is one website that recommended number one Ubuntu for beginners. I don't think so. Uh, I think number one should be Linux Mint or Zorn OS or even try a Chromebook. Uh, again, that's based on my almost 20 years of experience using different Linux systems. And yeah, so the learning curve, I can certainly understand that. But if you pick specific base systems like, like Linux Mint or Zorn, it shouldn't be that bad. Now, it says here learning the command line, uh, unless you buy a Chromebook, I cannot promise you, you will never have to use the terminal, the command line. That is true. That is true. But for most systems, well, not for most, but for some systems like Linux Mint, you may have to use the command line once or twice, but it's not that hard. It really isn't. All right, number three, hardware support. All right, although Linux supports a wide variety of hardware, and, the, and the, they mention printers or graphics cards, yeah, that's that's true. Um, I bought a new uh, printer, I forget which one it was, and uh, I did have to uh, run a few command terminals to get it to work, but uh, um, command line, uh, terminal commands, but okay, I'll, I'll give you three, chat GPT, that's, that's true. Number four, fragmentation, yeah, there are hundreds and hundreds of different Linux distributions to choose from. I can count on one hand that the ones that can compete with your Windows machines of the world, again, I mentioned uh, Linux Mint, you know, Zorn OS, uh, Ubuntu Mate is another good one. Of course, all, all, all the Chromebooks, because the Chromebooks, they are the only global Linux standard, and you, you never have to use the terminal in a Chromebook. Uh, there, yes, this is true. Fragmentation can be a problem, and like I said before, it is still confusing which one is supposedly the best for beginners and yeah, nothing has changed that much. Um, number five, gaming. All right, so you have tools like Proton and Steam's Linux client. Gaming has gotten much, much, much better. There's no question. Uh, is it better than Windows? Well, I don't game that much. I have an Xbox for that. But overall, from what I'm seeing, from what you guys are saying, if you really, really enjoy gaming, maybe with your kids or whatever, I would probably stay away from Linux right now, unless you are an experienced user and don't mind learning how to fix things or tinker with Linux to make your games work. So if you are a gamer, please don't say Linux sucks. Just, just stick with Windows and maybe use Linux for everything else. Again, I dual boot with different uh, SSD drives on the same machine and uh, maybe I'll show you how to do that one day but it's it's not that hard it really isn't um, all right support and documentation while there's still uh, there's a huge community many forums official support can be spotty documentation can sometimes be unclear uh, especially for niche distributions okay well don't use those brand new distributions or the ones that you've, you've never heard of I can tell you that Ubuntu, uh, Linux Mint, and some others have very good, easy to understand documentation on how to uh, solve an issue. Now, I won't say they all do that. They're not all easy. And yes, from what I understand, some communities can be a bit mean. You know, we're certainly not mean over here. At least we try not to be. But um, 
I can earn, I can understand this depending on which community forum you went to to uh, get a question asked. But yeah, Ubuntu and Linux Mint, those two, Zorn OS, they have pretty good documentation for what I've seen. All right, number seven was configuration. Linux allows for a high level of customization, but this can also make configuration more complex. Okay. With the ones that I've mentioned, you don't generally have to um, edit or configure anything. In Ubuntu, I had to. I had to delete the one extension, the apps menu that kept crashing the system. I had to search and search and find and find it's find the correct one that works. And really, this is just experimentation. But I have patience as a Windows user, and you may not, and I can understand that part. Uh, but for me. Uh, at least in Linux Mint, Zorn OS, and of course Chromebooks, there is no configuration. It's just it just wasn't built that way for the Chromebook. You shouldn't have configuration issues in Linux Mint, Zorn OS, and a few more. Um, all right, so it says here again: this, despite these challenges, many users prefer Linux for for its flexibility, security, and performance. It can be a great system if you're willing to put the time in to learn it. This is the key, if you are willing to put the time in to learn it. Okay, now in the past, you may have said, I tried Linux, it was awful, it sucked. Well, how long ago was it, and which Linux did someone give you the bad advice? Have you tried it again? Have you tried a Linux Mint? Have you tried a Zorn OS? Have you tried a Chromebook? In Chromebook, there's nothing to fix. Okay, they just work, and you may be surprised. So, yeah, if, if you are truly brand new to this and not even sure what Linux even means, sure, I like using uh, Ubuntu here on the big screen. It looks good, but there is some tweaking involved. It does take time, and really, this is on a 12-year-old system. It runs a little slow, but that's okay. It's not my main system. So, give it a shot. Uh, I, I think for the most part, how GPT answered my question, I think, was quite fair. And uh, I'll leave it at that. I think I've rambled long enough. If you had guys have any other inputs, post them in the comments below. I'm going to start my day, have my coffee. A beautiful sunny day here in Ubuntu land. Haha. <laughs> All right, guys. Catch you later. Take care.